So today we have a real interesting variables lesson where we're going to look at how to use Figma variables and conditional logic in order to track individual user analytics within a Figma prototype. So we're going to look at how to track session time of a particular page, the number of sessions of a particular page, the number of times a specific button was clicked, and also the click-through rate as well. One thing I would like to call out is that this approach is not all encompassing. In the last part of this video, I'll go more in depth on that. And also too, our first Figma plugin, our design system tracker is still in free public beta. Be sure to check that out before we do release our full paid version. Uh, a link for this will be in the description. So let's dive right in. So let's start off by looking at how to track how long a user viewing our prototype is spending on an individual page. In this process, you can repeat across all the pages that you might want to track. But for now, we're just going to focus on how long a user is going to spend within the prototype viewing our banking dashboard. So what I'm going to do first is actually set up the foundations for a timer. So I'm going to set this to zero. Let's make some small adjustments here. Just delete that. Make this a little bit bigger. Sorry, now I'm just getting picky. There we go. And so that's going to be our hours. This is going to be our minutes. And this is going to be uh, our seconds. Then I'm just going to add some colons in between just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Select all, add some auto layout, and we're going to call this uh, dashboard session timer. Beautiful. So now that we have our timer, let's create some local variables. And I'm just going to copy the name here. And they're going to be number variables. Uh, one is going to be for our seconds. Another is going to be for our minutes. And another is going to be for our hours. Oops. Our hours. And then let's just go ahead and apply these variables. So I'm just going to set this to our hours, this to our minutes, and this to our seconds. Beautiful. And then I'm just going to create the components and there we go. So now that we have the foundations for our timer and our variable set up, now we actually need to go ahead and add the conditional logic. And we're not adding the conditional logic to the timer itself. We're actually adding it to our made the frame for which we want to track. So in this case, our dashboard frame. So what I'm going to do is go into prototype, select interactions, and we're not going to have have it so that it's an action that we take is what's going to change the timer but it's actually going to be after specific delay because again if i click something i don't want it to click something in the seconds to go up same with hovering i want the seconds to go up after a second which is why i'm going to select after delay so after delay of a thousand milliseconds which is equal to one second what's going to happen is we're going to set some conditional logic that if seconds is less than 60, our seconds are going to go up by one. Again, what this is saying is that after one second, if seconds is less than 60, because again, once seconds hit 60, you want that to change to a minute and seconds to reset, which we'll get to in just a sec. So if seconds is less than 60, and we want to have to happen that, that our seconds will increase by one. Now let's add some additional conditional logic that's going to state that if our seconds is greater than or equal to 60, again, because we already have if seconds is less than 60 here. So if seconds is greater than or equal to 60, we want seconds to reset to zero. But we also want our minutes to go up by one. So we're going to add a set variable that's going to state our minutes to minutes plus one. We're just going to drag that in. Oops. Let's close this and then drag this in. So let's review this from the top, what this is essentially saying. So after a thousand milliseconds or one second, if seconds is less than 60, seconds will increase by one. If seconds is greater than or equal to 60, our seconds is going to reset to zero and our minutes is going to go up by one. Let's look at a quick demo of this. And I'm just going to hide this for now. And one thing that's important to note here is that um, when you're working with variables, especially text variables, like they don't change on the can Figma canvas itself. They only change within the prototype. So when you're viewing, if you want to go in and see your, the analytics is you actually have to view the prototype itself and then just find your way um, 
to the analytics page that a user cannot actually find. So it's less than ideal, but it's uh, what you got to do to make it work. So I'm just going to copy uh, a symbol of this. And then what I'm going to do is just present this as it stands. So I can see it's set to zero. But using um, the keys on my keyboard, if I navigate to this banking dashboard, I stay here for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And then I navigate back. I see it went up by one, but it didn't keep going up. And the reason being is that if we go back and look at our logic that we set, it's only saying after a delay of a thousand milliseconds, this occurs. Okay, but what happens after a thousand milliseconds? There's nothing that tells Figma that this process should repeat. So what we actually need to do is set this in what we call a loop. So this is where it gets fun is I'm just going to bring this down and create the components of this page. Right click and add a variant. Then what we're going to do is I can see that now on both our variants, we have the same conditional logic that we set, but now we need to place this in a loop. So we're going to add a change to our second variant. So after delay of a thousand milliseconds or one second, this process that we went through is going to happen. And then it's going to change to this variant. When it changes to this variant, after a thousand milliseconds, this process is then going to repeat. So after a thousand milliseconds, our second is going to go up by one. And then it's going to go to this variant where after a thousand milliseconds or one second, our second is going to go up by one. But now we want it to go back to our first variant where it then goes up by one again. So now we need to add a change to um, our first variant. So it's almost like a loop. So after a thousand milliseconds, it's swapping to this variant, runs through the process, and then goes to this variant, and it runs through the process again, where that timer just keeps going up, 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 and up. Um, one thing I would just like to call out is if you are really looking to track hours as well, just duplicate this process uh, for your hours. So now if we go back to our prototype F, but before we do that, we need to actually copy a symbol. A little slow, oops. Oh, come on. Third time a charm here. What's going on? There we go, awesome. <laughs> so uh, now that we have um, a symbol, I am going to frame this selection call it dashboard. And now if I play uh, this prototype again, I can actually, I'm just going to reset it here. So I'm going to play this from the beginning. So I can see it's currently at zero. And now if I go back and wait one, two, three, four, and five, and then navigate back, I can see that that timer has continuously gone up. And when I'm not on that page, I can see that that timer just does not keep going. So this is a real great, easy way to track how long that users are spending on your individual pages within your Figma prototype. All right, so now that we can track how long an individual user is spending on our banking dashboard, let's take it the next level further and actually look to calculate a click-through rate of a desired action. So I've added a couple more screens to the flow here. So we have, again, just a basic sign up or login. We have our banking dashboard. Once a user clicks deposit, they'll get taken to this page right here where they can select how much they want to deposit. So this, we're, with this page here, we're actually gonna track how many sessions this page has. So how many times one specific user has landed on this page. Then we also wanna track how many times a user uh, clicks this deposit funds. Are they clicking it once? Are they not clicking it at all? Because this is our desired action. So we're again, we're gonna track how many times how many sessions this page has, again, specific to one user, and then how many times this user clicks deposit funds and if they do it all. So let's start off by uh, setting up some local variables. So let's uh, create a number variable for deposit funds, uh, and let's just go sessions. And then, so again, that'll be how many sessions this page has, deposit funds, uh, button click. So how many times, then again, this would be how many times this button has been clicked. So deposit funds, sessions, then button click. And then let's go through uh, and actually uh, apply these variables here. So 
Again, we have our dashboard session time that I just added a section um, for the number of sessions and the number of times deposit uh, funds has been clicked. So let's uh, sessions, and then button click, and then CTR we won't uh, get to just just yet. So when we're tracking how many times, uh, how many sessions a page has, what we're actually going to do is we're going to add an interaction, but it's not going to be while hovering because if it's while hovering and it increases by one, it's just going to keep going up and up and up and up. An easier way to track this is just whatever a mouse enters the individual page itself. So when the mouse enters the page, we're going to set our number of sessions to sessions plus one. Let's try it out. So I'm just going to remove that. Let's uh, start this up. Screen here. Let's go forward. All right, I can see my mouse has landed on this page. And I can see that the number of sessions is now one. Beautiful. Now let's track how many times this button has been clicked. So let's uh, add an interaction that's going to state on click. We're going to set our variable button click to button click plus one. So then if I go back, click this button a couple times, I hit it three or four times there, I can see that uh, that has also gone up. So now that we have our number of sessions and the number of times that button has been clicked, we can now calculate our click-through rate or our conversion rates uh, accordingly. So what we're actually going to do is hit this button here and uh, oops, we actually need a local variable for our uh, CTR as well. So deposit funds, number variable, deposit, just make sure I spell this right, deposit funds, uh, and let's go uh, CTR. So click through rates, perfect. So let's go ahead and uh, apply this variable now. And let's prototype an interaction that's going to state, actually, let me define um, our CTR formula first. So our CTR is our clicks over our impressions. And believe it or not, with Figma variables, you can actually do some small cal calculations. Um, so CTR clicks over our impressions. So in this case, impressions will be our number of sessions and clicks will be, well, clicks. <laughs> so uh, what we actually want to have happen as well is that every time we come back, a user hits this dashboard, we want our CTR to update. So what we're going to have happen is that we're going to set an interaction on the frame for analytics dashboard itself that's going to hit while hovering. We want to set our variable to, again, our, our clicks over our impressions. So our button click, oops, hit the wrong one. Seat, we're gonna, so we're set our CTR variable to our clicks over our sessions. So again, whenever I start hovering on this page, our CTR is going to recalculate. So our CTR will change to the value of our button clicks, again, our clicks over our sessions, which is our impressions. So now if I come back to this page and I can see that now our CTR, our click-through rate, uh, has updated accordingly based on our current number of clicks and our number of sessions. So it's important to note that this method of tracking uh, analytics within your prototype is not perfect. It is not all encompassing. You know, if you're looking to track analytics across, you know, a crazy large user group uh, consisting of some users who you don't have a great relationship with, I would 100% advise against this. This process works really well for internal teams a really tight knit uh, user testing groups that you have a great relationship with. Let me elaborate on this. So some current limitations of this approach are that variables are unique to the user. So say one user goes through the prototype and maybe spends one minute on that banking dashboard. That one minute could not be added on to another user's two minutes. They are unique to the user. So again, at the end of the prototype, you would need to have uh, some way in order for that user to send you their analytics. So again, this process works best for internal teams. Maybe if you want your boss to run through something, see they, how they interact with your prototype, the rest of your design team. Or again, if you have a really tight knit user uh, testing community who would be more than happy to go to share uh, a screenshot uh, of their analytics. So what I actually did is when I was going through uh, or when I was asked to 
uh, come up with a way uh, to track some analytics on a particular prototype that I was working with is at the end of the prototype, I had users navigate to a page that looked like this. So thank you for testing this prototype. Your participation goes a long way to ensuring the best user experience possible. Please screenshot this page and send to Kirkland, me, and Slack. So the users would see their dashboard session time, the number of sessions they had on a particular page, the number of clicks on a particular button, and then their CTR. So again, this isn't what you don't want um, a user testing community full of users you don't have a relationship with landing on this page because they might not understand. But again, if you're working with a really tight-knit uh, group of user testers um, or a really tight-knit design team, they, they know, this works just fine. Um, and when I was going through and doing it, I actually got about 85 or 90% um, of the design team that I was working with to actually go through the prototype and then send me a screenshot of their analytics. You know, So your team will be more than willing uh, to test this out. So just as a little bit of a visual here, what happened um, is as a user's going through, land on the banking dashboard, spend a couple seconds, maybe I then hit deposit funds and I go back and then I go back and then I go back a couple times. Maybe on this third time, third or fourth time that I land on this page, I decide to actually deposit some funds. I would then land on a page like this, you know, funds had been deposited, but instead of returning home, I would get taken, or the user would get taken directly to this page itself. Again, I would, I would always uh, give the users who I sent it to a heads up that at the end, they're going to uh, receive a page that looked like this and if they could send their analytics to me so that I could dive into those insights. So again, thank you for testing this prototype. Your participation goes a long way to ensuring the best UX possible. Please screenshot this page, send to me in Slack, and I can see the user's dashboard session time, the number of sessions they had on a particular page, the number of clicks on the button, and also their CTR. So that is how I was able to track uh, analytics uh, for a particular prototype uh, within my internal team. Um, so yeah, hope this helps and happy analytics tracking. Thanks for watching today's video, everyone. Just want to encourage everyone to sign up for uicollective.co, our community for design system designers, where you get access to myself and Mike directly for any questions you might have relating to design systems, uh, variables, modes, anything to do uh, with Figma. And we did also just recently launch uh, our first Figma plugin, our design system tracker, where it tracks the component styles and variables that have been detached, which are remote, which are local, and where they come from. It's a real great way to ensure consistency in your designs before you ship off your designs to development. We are currently still in free public beta right now, but this will change in the next week or so as we're adding additional features and functionality for our full paid release. Uh, so be sure to check this out. Uh, and yeah, hope to see you online, UI Collective.